And hello, welcome to the Rise Fintech podcast. I'm Magdalena Kron, and I'm your host for today. Rise is Barclays' global community of top innovators working together to create the future of financial services. We are curious about what's in tech and what it means for, fu- for the future of banking. In this podcast, we meet innovators and entrepreneurs from around the world to understand from them what they are doing and what this means for the future of banking, straight from the mouths of the people who are trying to disrupt the industry. This episode features a very special guest, Lord Mayor uh, Peter Eslin, and in this snapshot interview, we will learn a little bit more about Peter's views on the world of fintech and how he thinks entrepreneurs are shaping the future of banking. So thank you for listening and enjoy the conversation. Hi, I'm Peter Estlin, the Lord Mayor of the City of London, and you are listening to the Rise Fintech podcast brought to you by Barclays. So Peter, thanks for being here today. Delighted. Very, very welcome. Um, to kick off, we like to do it in the traditional banking way, so we would like to authenticate you. Right. So I'm going to ask you three questions, and you can just give me the very simple answers. Okay. What was the name of your favorite teacher growing up? Mr. Whitlow. Mr. Whitlow? Whitlow, yes. Whitlow. Yeah. What did you last buy with your credit card? What did I last buy with my credit card? I think it might have been a coffee at Starbucks. (laughs) Okay, yeah, you need your coffee for you. And where did you last go for holiday? Well, I've got holiday, holiday, holiday. Uh, Malta. You passed. Congrats. Thank you very much. (laughs) I've got memory. (laughs) So, there's a lot of exciting things. We've had London Tech Week, and I'm sure you've had a very, very busy week. Um, What... I think today we want to focus a little bit on on the fintech in London Tech Week. Yeah. What do you think makes London and the UK such an exciting place to be for for a fintech and for for the finance industry? Fintech, uh, I mean, in terms of its um, development, I mean, one could argue has been around for a long long time. But in practice, uh, I mean, we've we've seen London as a global financial centre, uh, and that really has been at the heart of finance, certainly for the last few centuries. But more recently, with the emergence of the digital age, we have seen that innovation come through that started in the you know in the 18th century with the first industrial revolution. We've really seen that take off uh, here in London. And if one tries to pin down what it is, it is the fact that you've got this first, you've got this huge scale of the fintech markets in the first place. So you can draw on that capability, whether it's in banking, asset management, insurance. But secondly, um, we've then created uh, or or leveraged uh, a community that is being prepared, is prepared to disrupt. Uh, and when I say prepare to disrupt, yes, there's been some incentives. There's been some incentives through government, uh, whether it's through EIS and VCT mm-hmm. schemes, you know, sort of tax okay. incentives. But you've had a regulator who has been very open to collaboration in the sense of maintaining high standards, but actually working with fintechs to scale up. In other words, it's, you know, it's challenging when you're coming into the market to embrace all of that capability. So the, you know, the sandbox uh, that the FCA have created has enabled fintechs to work with uh, the regulators to build up their capability, you know, testing, live testing with customers. So again, it's another capability, it's another innovation. But you then look at the huge diversity that London has, the creative energy, whether it's coming from the universities, but whether it's coming from the workforce. Uh, and I look at London as that multicultural environment. 42% of, of the workforce are not born in the UK. So you've got this wealth of ideas coming in. Not Me just included. You included. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's not just, it's not just London. So London is, London is uh, a marketplace, not just for the UK, but for, for the world. Mm-hmm. And so... It's no reason that, uh, or not, not surprising, that now we've created an industry where, whilst innovation is taking place all over the world, fintech specifically, you know, global hub now is London. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the satellites of that in Leeds and Glasgow and, and, and Cardiff and, and Manchester, you know, are spawning as well because of, of the vibrancy of the London market. Uh, we, off the back of, 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 of our strength in capital markets, we, we are attracting record levels of capital. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that's fueling it. And of course, as that generates success, I think now, what, 13 or 13 uh, unicorns in the last, yeah. last year alone, mm-hmm. you know, that success fuels success. But it's not all about the money. I mean, some of the, some of the developments that we're seeing are getting wider engagement in financial, whether it's through Funding Circle, in allowing people to participate, um, with the more 
uh, analytical aspects like Oak North um, or going digital like Monzo mm -hmm. uh, and sort of creating, a, again, a different capability. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's a really exciting opportunity and it's just continually being fueled by new ideas. Yeah. And how do you see the traditional banks and the, the, the startups sit together and, and collaborate? It's a really good question because in one sense, um, we, we started to see uh, um, some challenge coming from outside. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's a transfer wise who are saying, well, you know, let's look at the sheer scale of FX. You know, there's more FX done in London than any other uh, uh, financial center in the world. How can we tap into that yeah. as a new player? Uh, and looking at something relatively simple and saying, well, if we can digitize that through an app, um, you know, we can operate at very fine margins and mm. therefore challenge uh, the existing players. So we, we, we're open to that. I mean, the UK has always been open to almost that self-feedback and allowing people to challenge. But in parallel, what was happening, uh, and I saw this firsthand with my experience at Barclays, was that as a large bank uh, and its own large technology operation, it said, well, How do we challenge ourselves? How do we bring in talent, um, innovative talent, to actually challenge our own existing infrastructure and systems? Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to move on. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, Barclays created their own internal incubator. So we saw the market develop rapidly with uh, a combination of these internal incubators mm -hmm. within businesses themselves where they saw the real need to, 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 to um, uh, innovate and change alongside this disruptive capability coming from the outside. But they then started to create their own disruption. Mm. Uh, and that's always a big thing for a business to say, at what stage do you cannibalize your own business? But if you don't do that, You then don't you don't respond to the changing market needs. Yeah. So uh, to me, that's where I mean London in particular, and again we're seeing it across the UK. We are we're seeing the growth through the build up of um, of those entrepreneurs coming through individually, yeah. uh, and, and they're they're grouping up to some extent through the tech nations of this world, through Tech UK, you know, through the other uh, sort of accelerator programs, and, and attracting again more people coming mm -hmm. in internationally, not just domestically. So it, it is that it is that sense of um, you know, really pioneering and saying, look, you know, if, if we don't move forward, if you stand still, you're going to die. Yeah, no, it's you constantly have to challenge yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, I say challenge is your greatest teacher. So uh, <laughs> I hope both ex entrepreneurs and existing players learn something from from each other. Well, it is. I mean, I, I would argue that yeah, there are only ever two outcomes in life. You either succeed or you learn. Yeah. And, and, and within that learning, you know, we need to encourage people to take risks, mm. appropriate risks, and not be afraid of making mistakes. I mean, mm. making mistakes mm. is part of our human journey. The secret is not to make the same mistake twice. Yeah. And that's the secret of learning and, and actually drawing on the feedback, drawing on, on the mm. evidence of a mistake and saying, right, that didn't work. What do I do differently? Mm. Uh, and, yeah, and that's what we need to encourage. And that's why I think the regulator has been a natural partner in saying, fine, we are going to maintain these high standards, but actually we're going to work with you because you are innovating, you are pushing mm -hmm. the boundaries, uh, and we won't get to these new areas unless we work with you. Yeah. So in, in your in your role as Lord Mayor, have you when you've gone to other countries, you've been traveling quite a lot this year, um, what have you seen that excites you or because a lot of people in, are inspired by we, what we're doing here in the UK with the regulator and, and with the ecosystem that we build. Yeah. But have you seen any good examples in other location in other countries and other regions? Um, Well, I have seen some some great examples. I mean, you know, there's no doubt that uh, on my uh, visit to um, the west coast of, of the US, I mean, you know, the, the sheer scale of innovation taking place uh, in San Francisco and, and Palo Alto and the Valley you know, is enormous. And whether it's into software engineering or hardware, but there's an appreciation there that actually the fintech capability um, and the strength of that in London is huge. So when we took a whole lot of fintechs with us, uh, no surprise actually that a number of them came away with fresh investment into yeah. their business, uh, which is, is great to see. Um, but so, so in some senses, there are ideas that we see. Uh, I think another area uh, and another visit, I mean, how we use data. And, and uh, I've just come back from Estonia. Mm. Uh, and you know, there, I mean, over 20 years, realistically, I mean, they've moved to a digital economy. 
in a way that has sought to balance this challenge with data as data becomes much more a currency in its own right. How do you balance the importance of privacy Mm -hmm. and accountability, particularly for individual data, so you own your own data, but also leverage data for the value it can bring, um, both in an aggregated manner, um, you know, uh, um, maintaining anonymity, but but actually pulling that together. And so I think Estonia has done that very well. And and they would admit that the first two or three years... Um, in, in moving to sort of a, a digital identity uh, and a very structured regime around education, yeah. health, finance, uh, um, and, and sort of government identity at the same time. But you know now when anybody touches your data, yeah. you get notified. Mm. Uh, because there's a higher degree of transparency, uh, at the moment there's less fraud because it's transparent. Yeah. Uh, and so they've been very successful. And I yeah. think... And actually, I didn't know it at the time, but of course, transfer-wise, the original founders were were actually Estonians. Um, They came to London because they saw London as the place to grow their business, um, and they were very successful in that. But, I mean, historically, they actually came out of Estonia. Um, So I think as we look forward... You know, there is there's talent uh, and innovation emerging all around the world, uh, and one of the roles, one of my roles, is is really multi, well, it's multifaceted. It's mm-hmm. to promote um, the innovation and capability that we've got here, to yeah. help export, to help uh, promote that internationally into markets like India, you know, the Middle East, um, Asia, uh, more broadly the US. So that's the first aim, sort of effectively export um, and to help them to position that. And I think developing corridors now, digital corridors between countries. We had a very good session yesterday with Singapore. Mm. But the second is is to um, encourage um, international businesses uh, to come to the UK, to expand in the UK, not only to benefit the UK economy directly, but to leverage the talent and capability Mm. that we've got here. And and you've seen that with your Barclays Rise and encouraging different international parties to, to come here. Um, third is to tap into, uh, obviously, the global financial markets, uh, the sovereign wealth funds, the venture capitalists, uh, and again, to encourage them to invest um, in, in, in UK startups. Um, and, and, and a third of, of the capital that's coming through the UK I- into innovation is coming from international sources. So, I mean, that again, that's very encouraging. Um, and it comes back to the fact that, you know, the fundamentals of London over centuries, you know, it, it's it's a very solid, reliable marketplace. Yeah, amazing. So my final question is um, a little bit around about what do you? What are the key initiatives that you've been driving, that you are driving in your role as Lord Mayor, and what do you want to get to at the at the end of your? Year? So my overall year, I, I've yeah. I've uh, badged and labelled shaping tomorrow's city today. Uh, and really what I'm trying to get out of that is three things. Firstly, to be really proud and to promote the innovation and technology mm-hmm. that is taking place in the UK. Uh, we don't always shout out about it. We're a bit reserved. Yeah. <laughs> we need to be a little bit more you know, upbeat. You know, we have got a fantastic economy from the point of view of, of growth in jobs uh, and businesses. Uh, and so I want to really, really amplify that mm-hmm. and use my time um, abroad both as well as domestically to do that. But secondly, to encourage um, encourage the take up of, of digital skills, the creativity that comes with this, uh, and that's very much working with businesses across the UK, Barclays, Lloyd's, Nominet, Accenture, BT, uh, as well as the mass consumer businesses, to say, how do we both inject th- this energy into our, our younger people coming through in schools? Yeah. But also, how do we take um, our, our employee bases with us? Because the world is changing, and it's changing very fast. Uh, and it's not to force anybody down this route, but to encourage the take-up in a safe way. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot to get out of it, mm-hmm. um, but we also need to do it in a safe and managed way. Because there are, unfortunately, those out there who, who would do us harm. Uh, and that leads really to the third objective, which is to ensure that we're taking everyone with us. Uh, and I know Barclays has done a huge amount there with, with their digital eagles, uh, and others are doing similarly, which is how do we really help and ensure that we take society along with us? Because mm-hmm. you know, as we digitise more and more of our industries and our capabilities, we can't afford to leave people behind. Uh, and so we, we do need to um, look at how we how we do ensure that um, the capabilities of technology can be distributed uh, to everybody in a safe way. 
Amazing. Really interesting insight. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and this is the final day of Tech Week, and I hope you get some good rest tonight. <laughs> thank you, Magda. It's been a great week, and um, it's great to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you.